Based on a parallel tradition upon whose authenticity all Muslims agree that the Messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, informed his followers on several occasions that he would leave them two precious weighty and if all Muslims adhere to them both, they will never go astray after him. They are the Book of Allah, the Noble Quran and the members of the house of the Prophet, the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them all. Tonight's episode is an attempt to examine the role of Ahlul Bayt in Islam as well as in the Quran. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the 14th episode of Life from Karbala, Ramadan series with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Before I begin the episode, I would like to send my congratulations upon you, my respected viewers, upon our master of our time, Imam Al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, the Ahlul Bayt and Prophet Muhammad, and our pious maraja and scholars. Uh, for the birth anniversary of our beloved fourth infallible of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Imam Al Hassan. Uh, so for that reason, I would like to ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bestow His blessings, His mercy, and forgiveness. Although we are in the month of forgiveness and mercy and blessings, but more blessings upon you, my respected viewers, on this auspicious occasion. Uh, but I am honored to host this program once again with my dear guests and esteemed guests. Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alhamdulillah. I would like to congratulate you on this auspicious occasion. Likewise. Allah Likewise. Inshallah. Mubarakin, inshallah. Uh, Allah Yisrael. Alaikum. Sayyidna, over the past few episodes, uh, we have brought mention of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. For example, uh, Imam in the Quran, that was the earliest episode we had. Infallibility in the Quran, uh, the wise of the Prophet, knowledge of the unseen. And we mentioned them throughout here and there, throughout the episodes. Uh, prior to today, uh, considering that the majority of Muslims today are Sunni, it, it's safe to say that 90% of the Sunnis claim that the authority or the role of Ahlul Bayt is spiritual more than physical and, and political. You know, uh, according to the only one Imam got to actually lead the Ummah, uh, Imam Ali ibn Talib. No other Imam do we see leading the Ummah. The rest of them are either poisoned or killed. Uh, but that's due to circum certain circumstances, uh, but I would like to begin uh, by examining what the role of Ahlul Bayt is within Islam. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Sallallahu Ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Wa Alihi Al-Tayyibin Al-Tahirin. First of all, I congratulate you and my dear uh, brothers and sisters our dear viewers on the birthday of Al Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba Alihi Afdul Salat Wa Salam. Ahl al Bayt Ali Musalam, they, they had an ordained duty and responsibility, and that was the Imamah. And we talked about that during the first session of this series. Yes. That the Ahl al Bayt are ordained Imams. They are, imam, they are infallible Imams. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the position of Imama. Yes. Is it selected or elected? Um, what are the requirements and criteria to be an Imam? Could mm -hmm. just anyone be an Imam? Yes. Or are there certain requir requirements and criteria? And it was all based on the Quran. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to say now is that practically, what, did, what role did the Ahlul Bayt have in addition to the Imam? Yes. What roles did they play? What was the role in the Islamic nation? Mm -hmm. We know that the Ahlul Bayt, they were, they were selected Imams yes. by Allah Azza wa Jal. Not by the people. Mm -hmm. This is not a matter of democracy. Mm -hmm. These are chosen people. This is not a matter of, you know, let the people choose mm -hmm. uh, their Imam. No, an Imam, we said, is the continuation of prophecy, mm -hmm. prophethood. The same way that we do not choose a prophet, we cannot choose an imam. Why? Because the, the imam continues the job of yes. the prophet. It's the, same, it's the same line. Now what is it that he does? First of all, the role of the Ahlul Bayt were to explain and interpret the Qur'an yes. and Islam. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the Ahlul Bayt, Islam would have remained um, unexplained. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said إِنِّي تَارِكُمْ فِيكُمُ الْتِقْلَيْنِ كِتَابَ اللَّهُ وَعَتْرَتِي I leave with you two things, the book and my family. 
They go hand in hand. Why the book in the family? Because the family is needed to explain the book. The book by itself uh, is not enough for the people. Mm -hmm. Because some of the verses need explanation. They need tafsir. Mm -hmm. They need help to be explained. Um, How come others explain the Quran without the Bayt? And they're, they're apparently doing so well. No. Uh, many of the verses in the Quran have been explained without the help of the Ahlul Bayt. Out of context? Out of context and ignorantly. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why the Quran has been misunderstood, mm -hmm. this is one of the main reasons, is that we took the Ahlul Bayt away from the Quran. Yes. And we tried to understand the Quran without the Ahlul Bayt and we reached you know, detrimental results. Mm -hmm. You can't separate the family from the book. The family is what explains the book, the details of the book, the, the intricate laws of Islam mm -hmm. is found in with the Ahlul Bayt. لا يعرف القرآن إلا من خطب به. You can't really understand Quran unless you have been spoke. The Quran has has spoken to you. And the Quran speaks to the Ahlul Bayt. إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت. The Quran speaks to the Ahlul Bayt. Thus, and I'm not speaking theoretically, even practically. Mm -hmm. When we read the history of Ahlul Bayt, we see. They were kept away from power. The Ahlul Bayt were kept away from power. Yes. But this doesn't mean that they sat at home and retired and their role was over. No, mm -hmm. the Ahlul Bayt, they, uh, they educated, they schooled, they, uh, they had students, even their opponents, even those that kept them away from power, they were still in, the ne they were still in need of the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt. Yes. We don't have a single imam that wasn't needed, not just by the people. Let, you know, let, let's put the, the people alone. By the authority, by the authorities, they were needed. From Imam Ali alayhi salam, who was needed several times mm -hmm. by the first Khalifa yes. Abu Bakr, by the second Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab, to the point that Umar ibn al-Khattab several times he stated, "Lola Aliyun la halak Umar, la abqani Allah li mu'adratin, laysa laha Abu al-Hasan." that if it wasn't for Ali, Umar would have perished. Why? Because he needed his counsel, he needed his knowledge, he needed his expertise. And Imam Ali was not greedy with his knowledge. He could have easily said that, you know, you took the Imam away from me, mm -hmm. you go and run it by yourselves. Mm -hmm. well, if, no, if, you, if you don't see me qualified for the mm -hmm. Imam, why are you coming to ask me questions? Mm -hmm. You said I'm too young. You said I'm too young. Khalas, if I'm too young, why are you asking me questions? Go and run the Khilafah by yourself and let's see what happened. But Imam Ali was not like that. That would have destroyed the Ummah. Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, had foresight. Yes. He didn't care whether he's in power or not. What he cared about was the nation. Yes. Was the Islamic nation. Is it in a good state or a bad state? Even if he was being oppressed by not coming to power, he was still not greedy with his knowledge. Mm -hmm. He gave all that he could to this nation to keep it on the right track. And the same thing goes for Imam al-Hassan, Imam al Hussein, and all the other Imams, the Khulafa, they were in need of the Ahlul Bayt. So number one, to explain and interpret Islam. Mm -hmm. Two, to defend Islam. We see that the Ahlul Bayt, they defended Islam at times of emergencies, at times when Islam was in danger, the Islamic nation was in danger, the Ahlul Bayt, they, they stepped forward. Defend Islam in what manner? Defend Islam's uh, reputation. Defended Islam's honor but and dignity. But were Muslims running the, the government back then? They were running the government. However, the government and the authority, they faced a lot of obstacles. For mm -hmm. example, during the days of Imam al-Baqir, uh, the Khalifa at the time, I believe, I believe, I am not sure now, I believe uh, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Mm -hmm. I believe, I might be mistaken. The Khalifa of the, at the time of Imam al-Baqir, whether it was Abdul Malik ibn Marwan or someone else, they faced a problem mm -hmm. over the currency. The currency used in the Islamic empire was the Roman currency. And that, that currency was now being changed. There was a problem with the Roman empire and the Muslims needed their own currency. 
عبد الملك المرو... عبد الملك بن مروان needed the help of Imam al-Baqir. Imam al-Baqir told him it's not a big deal. Make your own currency. Bring gold dinars, stamp on them, and write on them, for example, La ilaha illa huwa al-haq al-mubin. Something like that. Or La ilaha illa Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. Stamp on them. Make your own currency. Of course, I'm, sh- I'm summarizing a very long story, yes. a huge incident that took place yeah, that challenged, yes. was a challenge for Islam and Muslims. Imam al-Baqir gave his, gave his advice, mm-hmm. and the Khalifa took that advice. During the time of Imam al-Hassan al-Askari, there was, um, there was a drought, and the Muslims would pray, they would go out on, go out on the desert and pray for... Mm-hmm. Um, for, for rain mm-hmm. and it wouldn't rain while a Christian man would come raise his hand and it would immediately start raining yeah, that's true. so people you know became suspicious of suspicious them. skeptical why why is Allah answering the prayer of a Christian but he's not answering the prayer of a uh, of Muslims mm-hmm. answering the prayer of a Christian that's fine because he's he's one of Allah's creations and Allah answers his creation but why not Muslims mm-hmm. this says something about Islam so the Khalifa sent a message to Imam Al Hassan Al Askari that come and find us a solution. People were, were starting to, to, to join the, the, the other. Yeah, they, the, I mean, they started raising questions about Islam. Yeah. Imam Al Hassan Al Askari said, Go and see what this man is holding in his hand. He's, he has something in his hand. They discovered that he, he's carrying a bone of a Prophet. Wow. And when the bone of the Prophet is shown to the sky, the sky automatically rains. Automatically rains. So they discovered his secret. And so on and so forth. During the time of Imam al Hassan Askari, there was a man by the name of Al Kindi who wrote a book regarding the contradictions in the Quran, the contradicting verses in the Quran. Imam al Hassan al Askari sent him a message and told him, Before you publish the book, sit and, and think about these verses. Are they really contradictory? Think about them. Where is the contradictions? Mm-hmm. Where? In these verses, there's no contradiction. And those verses, Imam Hassan Askari solved for him this, uh, this intellectual problem. Mm-hmm. Thus, we see that Ahl Bayt, one of their main roles was to defend Islam. Mm-hmm. Physically, militarily, intellectually. Even though they were not in power, they were, they were kept away from power, they were marginalized. Yet their main role was to defend Islam. Mm-hmm. Among their roles was to raise a generation of intellectual and educated and spiritual Muslims. Mm-hmm. They weren't in power, so what? They still did their job. They didn't say that, okay, now that we're not in power, we, uh, our duty, our responsibility is, mm-hmm. is no longer, you know, we, don't, we no longer have a responsibility. No. But isn't a leader should lead? A leader should lead, no? Yes, but how do you define leadership? A leader does not necessarily need to sit in the White House and lead. He, he does not need to sit in the, in the office of the Prime Minister or the Khalifa to lead. A leader can lead from his house. And that's how our Imams led. Mm-hmm. Imam Zayn Abidin Ali Salam would buy slaves. He would buy slaves. He would educate them. He would raise them. He would uh, fill them with spirituality. He would educate them, and then he would set them free. Of course, he he bought these slaves not you know not for himself, yes, but to educate them. And he couldn't open a university and a school that would be too suspicious, and it would bring him, you know, it would get him into trouble. Mm-hmm. So he would buy slaves, educate them, work on them spiritually, intellectually, academically. And then send them out. And the job of Imam Zayn Abidin was so crucial. He raised a group of a generation of spiritual Muslims, intellectual Muslims. And that's the role of Ahl al Bayt. If we look at it, if we look at their role historically, they did a, a lot of service, mm-hmm. a lot of service for Islam, even though they were not in power. Imagine if they were in power, if they had the means, yeah, they would have if they had the money, if they had the means and the money and the military. Imagine when how much the Ahl Bayt could have accomplished. Mm-hmm. They were marginalized, persecuted, oppressed, hurt. 
their followers were persecuted, they were jailed, they were killed, all of them were killed. Yes. All of, many of them were jailed. Yes. Many of them were sent into exile. They were yes. all poisoned yes. and look at how much they've achieved. Yes, a lot. Yes, so their role I could say mainly was intellectual, mm -hmm. to teach, to spread knowledge, to give the true face of Islam, yes. to spread the true face of Islam. And it was spiritual as well, to, to show people the, spirit, the spiritual side of Islam, mm -hmm. the beautiful side of Islam. Mm -hmm. What they accomplished, no one at their time Correct. had accomplished. No one from the Sahaba, from Absolutely. the Tabi'een. Absolutely. Not, not Abu Hanifa, not Ahmed ibn Hanbal, not Malik ibn Anas, not al -Shafi. No one accomplished what the Ahlul Bayt had accomplished. They were all students under the, the school of yes. Sadiq That's right. Uh, but now that since we have concluded that Ahlul Bayt go hand in hand with the Quran according to the tradition of, uh, stated by Prophet Muhammad, uh, some state that the Ahlul Bayt are the Quran but I'll give you the chance to, to, to comment on that but Prophet Muhammad says as the stars in the sky are the source of guidance for the travelers the holy ones of my household the 12 Imams are the source of guidance for the people and the stars will remain in the sky until the day of judgment the earth will never be without a divinely guided Imam from my Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them this scholars have come forth and stated that this narration goes hand in hand with uh, the verse found in chapter 20, uh, 32 uh, verse 24 however in the early episodes when we talks about uh, imama and infallibility I believe in infallibility uh, that when you said that I'll just read out the verse it says and we assign from among them some leaders imams who will guide our authority since they were patient and believed firmly in our signs وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُ you, you stated that this verse was talking about the prophets. Now, can we discuss that how does the, or does the Quran make reference to the Ahlul Bayt? If you can comment on this as well. Sure. First of all, we talked, and when we talked about this verse, we said that it's talking about the position of Imams. And prophets are some of the Imams. And there were other Imams as well. The prophets mentioned in Surah Al-Anbiya are some of the Imams. They are not all of the Imams. And there were other Imams, our Imams. However, there are several specific references to the Ahl al-Bayt in the Quran. Mm -hmm. If this verse you know is not clear some might say that this is talking about the prophets but that's fine there are verses that are speaking specific that speak specifically about the Ahlul Bayt in the Quran as agreed upon by both mm -hmm. schools of thought Sunni and Shia uh, Shia scholars mm -hmm. so can we conclude that this verse is talking about the Imams or the prophets both both it's talking about the position of, of the leadership imam. whoever has the quality of Imam mm -hmm. of Imamah some prophets were imams and our imams were imams so this verse this verse is speaking about our imams as well mm -hmm. but we have other verses as well okay we have other verses sure one one verse that you know has no no ambiguity whatsoever mm -hmm. Say that I ask you no reward for my services except love for my kin, for my family. And this is not prophets, this is not sahaba, this is not even wives. My family, qurba, my relatives. But aren't my the close wives ones. relatives of the prophet? They're not called qurba. Qurba Blood relations? Blood, uh, uh, blood relation. Your wife is not your relative. Your wife is your wife, your spouse. She's not your relative. Mm -hmm. Your relative is your mother, your father, your brothers, your, sis your siblings, your grandparents, your cousins. These are your relatives. Your wife is not your relative. Your companion is not your relative. This is very clear. 
and all scholars from both the Sunni and Shia school of thought have agreed that Al Qurba here means Ahl al Bayt. Tayyib. Innama Yuridullah Yudhiba and Kumurat Sahil al Bayt wa Harakum Tatira. This doesn't require uh, any, uh, any proof. We talked about this several times. Several times, yes. In the past uh, couple of sessions, that yes. Ahl al Bayt here means the specific family members of Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah, Imam Ali, mm -hmm. Al Hassan wal Hussein and Fatima al-Zahra mm -hmm. This verse is not talking about the wives of Rasulullah. We talked about this verse when we spoke about the wives of Rasulullah. Yes, you remember. And the verses before and after are all speaking about the wives in the, in the female. Even in the same verse. Even in the same verse. And, and even in the same verse in the female pronoun. Kunna. Kunna. With the N at the end. All of a sudden, this, se this statement uses kum. So we have this verse. Mm -hmm. Another verse that speaks of the Ahl al-Bayt clearly. Mm -hmm. This is revealed about the Ahl al-Bayt and about their fasting for three days and how they remained fasting for three days mm -hmm. uh, only with water and on the first day uh, an orphan came uh, I'm sorry a poor person came yes. and on the second day a an orphan came and on the third day a a uh, prisoner of war came and wanted food and Fatima to Zahra give all of their you know bread that was on the dinner table this is in Surah Al-Insan and even Sunni scholars admit that this verse was revealed regarding the Ahlul Bayt. And another verse, I believe, in Surah Al Imran. فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ When Rasulullah was speaking to the Christians of Nijran, and they had the mubahala. Yes. Bring your family, bring your woman, and we'll bring our woman. Bring your children, and we'll bring our children. And bring yourselves, and we'll bring ourselves, and then we'll perform a mubahala. Mubahala is to see who's telling the truth, and whoever is lying, they will ask Allah to curse. Allah's damnation yes. upon them. Yes. Scholars say that this verse was re revealed regarding Ahlul Bayt. Yes. No one else. Mm -hmm. No one else regarding him. So if there is other verses that might be vague, these verses and others, of course, we don't have time to, to address all the other verses. There's more. But these verses are very clear. Very, very clear, clear regarding Ahl al-Bayt. They, they, they are very clear. But Sayyidina, if we can continue the discussion after the break, inshallah, respected viewers, uh, do stay tuned for during the break, you inshallah be presented uh, with an overview of what tonight's episode is about. So to that, we'll be back shortly. viewers welcome back hope you inshallah enjoyed uh, that overview uh, but before the break we talked about who the Ahl Bayt are and what the role is in Islam as well as in the Quran uh, this was all discussed with my esteemed guest here Hussein Khazwini welcome back Habib Sayyidina thank you very much Allah khalikum, inshallah once again I would like to congratulate you as well as you respected viewers for uh, the blessed birth of our fourth infallible likewise Hassan Mushtaba. likewise uh, Allah khalikum. Sayyidina we you have mentioned various references within the Holy Quran that mention the Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them. However, you just mentioned a verse 
uh, from chapter 42 verse 23 uh, I don't want any reward from you except to love those near of kin those of my family kin refers to if you want to refer back to the dictionary it means family members why does the Quran have to tell us about this I mean all I ask you is to love my family uh, Prophet Muhammad yes he brought Islam he brought us tranquility peace love compassion whatever you want to say within Islam but why is he saying to love my kin why love because love is the easiest thing that you could do Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying to them that basically I served you for 23 years 24 years how many have however many years that you that you want to calculate mm -hmm. I guided you I took you out from ignorance to from from night to day mm -hmm. you're in a you're in a state of ignorance I I opened your eyes you were killing your daughters alive infanticide I made you stop that habit Rasulullah changed these people yes he really changed them he reformed them mm -hmm. he's saying that all I ask for I don't want a position. I don't want to be a king. I don't want your wealth. I don't want anything for myself. I just want one thing. Love my family members after me. Is that hard to ask for? It's something very simple. Mm -hmm. Don't give them money. Don't give them, just love them. What's the meaning of love? When, when you love someone, what do you do? al mawadda see, when you love someone, See, he didn't say hub. He said mawadda. Mawadda is more than love. Mm -hmm. It's more than love. When you, it's, I don't know what the right word for it in English, but it's more than love. It's love. Can we say affection, or is that less? Well, love is a form of affection. Mm -hmm. It's love that entails to be followed as well. So don't just love them. A lot of people loved Ahlul Bayt, but not to the point that they followed them as well. When you love someone, you follow, you imitate, you take an, as an example. Mm -hmm. Loving the Ahlul Bayt is not just loving them by the heart, yes. but you know, using your, your sword against them. Like uh, the people in Karbala with Imam Hussein Ali Salam. When Imam Hussein asked Al Farazdaq, how did you find the people of Kufa? He told them, قُلُوبُهُمْ مَعَكْ They love you, their hearts are with you. وَلَكِنْ سُيُوفُهُمْ عَلَيْكْ But their heart, but their swords are against you. That's not the love that Ahlul Bayt want. You know, the, the, the love that the Qur'an speaks about. The love that entails, uh, you know, being followed, being imitated, mm -hmm. being emulated, following in their footsteps. Mm -hmm. yeah.